certainly. Um, one of the interesting things about journalists, and maybe this is print journalists more than broadcast journalists, but many of us, contrary to um, conventional wisdom, are introverts and, and are pretty good one-on-one, -on -one, have to be able to talk to somebody one-on-one -on -one and collect information and make a person comfortable, but don't spend much time speaking in front of groups. Um, and for me, the first time that became a part of my daily routine was when I became managing editor of the paper. So the managing editor in our newsroom, and it was here, um, leads a conversation in the morning and another meeting in the afternoon of all the editors within the newsroom gathering story ideas and trying to figure out what stories we'll cover that day. And the big decisions are about what will go on tomorrow's front page once we have all those collected. And I had been to many of those meetings over the course of my career, but never led one. And um, one of the hardest things for me, these were people I'd worked with and knew and were friends with, but something about uh, standing up in front of all of them and having to make decisions quickly on my feet scared me to death. And it was very much a deer in the headlights for the first several um, weeks of those meetings and um, I was fortunate enough to have a mentor and a boss who um, didn't, didn't take over for me, kind of let me fail a little bit and figure that out a little bit on my own. And at those moments when I was really having a hard time making a decision and feeling the most nervous I can remember, I would, I would look at him for an answer and, come on, g you know, give me a hint. And he was completely stone-faced. and. Um, and I think that was probably best, would let me kind of work my, my way through it. And I learned a couple of lessons from that. One is it just, it just takes a lot of practice to get comfortable. And you really do get more comfortable when you do it more. And the second was that I think you don't, um, I presumed I had to have all the answers myself and had to be in command and control all the time. Um, and that wasn't the case at all. Um, the best decisions were made and I was more at ease when I could lead a conversation and get more people involved in coming to a decision. I found out I could do that and that felt comfortable to me. Um, and so it was the way of doing the public speaking or kind of leading a meeting. I found a way that was comfortable for me. Um, uh, the top editors of the paper are frequently asked to um, speak at a Rotary Club, you know, those kinds of public speaking events. Um, those were even scarier. Um, to me because it, now you're in front of a large group and there's something about standing at a lectern and having the spotlight shine on you um, and again feeling like you have to be um, the authority and, and be well spoken um, it just adds to, uh, add, at least for me, was even more nerve-wracking um, and, 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 and again I just had to find my way through that, find um, a way to make it more comfortable for myself. Um, and and I, one of the things that lessons I learned the hard way probably was to speak to things I knew. I can tell you a story about the way the newspaper runs. Um, but I found, for instance, if I were asked a lot of in-depth legal questions about a, a lawsuit we were involved in um, that was kind of outside my area of expertise, I got really nervous because I, I was less sure of myself. Um, and so, I, I, you know, I've, um, as I've accepted speaking engagements, um, I've, I've tried to find some time to have a conversation with whoever's invited me to try to come to some kind of agreement about what I'm gonna speak about and make it something I'm comfortable speaking about. And that makes all the difference in the world um, to me. And I, and I always, uh, maybe to a fault leave a lot of time for questions and answers and find people love that and again that's a more comfortable place for me to be just to ca have a conversation back and forth so when I'm given 30 minutes or 45 minutes what seems like a long amount of time um, I generally try to keep my speech um, to maybe 10 minutes and have 10 points for me it's always if I have 5 points or 10 points that way I, I don't um, I can just write those points down, not have to write a speech out verbatim um, and be able to recall those points, but because it's a, a topic I'm familiar with and comfortable with, and then leave lots of time afterward. I think it's okay to say I don't know, um, and, and I've, I've gotten better at doing that as well. I, if I don't have the expertise, 
um, you know, I've, I've offered to go find out for people and get back to them. Um, and that's always been acceptable. I've never had anyone suggest it wasn't. Um, but it's okay to say, you know, that's a really interesting question and I just don't know the answer to it. I actually am speaking tomorrow. This is very timely for me. I'm on a panel discussion at a little journalism conference in Olympia. <clears throat> and so some of the things I've done to prepare, one, I had a conversation with a man who's running the forum um, and asked um, to be sure I understood what the topic was. Uh, there's a brochure for this conference, so I read through what the description of uh, our panel was. I know what, what the attendees will be expecting. I know who the other members of my panel are. I don't know exactly what they're going to be talking about, but I have sense, some sense of who they are and what role they play. Um, so I kind of find a niche for myself. What piece of this conversation could I um, best address? Um, I called the, the um, moderator up again and said, you know, uh, it's not really clear to me. Do you want me to, to have 10 minutes worth of content to, to speak about, or is this all going to be a question answer that you lead? If so, do you, could I have the questions in advance? Those are the kinds of things that you can do. In this case, he didn't. He said 10 minutes of whatever you want. Um, so I just spent some time this afternoon looking back through columns I'd written on the topic and coming up with, again, for me, it's, uh, numbers help me. So I have three tips for, for the people attending this. Um, and I'll, so I'll write down what those tips are, and I know I have a little story to tell about each one of those tips. I think telling a little story is, is very engaging in a good way. Um, it makes me comfortable, and I think it, it helps um, to illustrate a point to the audience as well. So I'm, I'm planning my three points, my three tips, and my three stories, and the rest will play by ear. A little bit, but I have found, and again, <clears throat> trial and error. I have written speeches word for word, and I don't like the way I deliver them. Um, I, it makes me more nervous, because I, I feel like I'm reading, and I've practiced it. I stood in front of the mirror and practiced these exact words over and over, um, to the point that I think it almost builds up the anxiety. Uh, so what I, I found works better for me is to, again, be sure um, I'm comfortable with the, the um, content I'm delivering. And if I can just go with a, kind of a bulleted outline, that's perfect for me. Because I, that way, if I get nervous and forget a point, it's right there in front of me. But it's not written out so that I'll have my head down reading from a paper. And that engagement with the audience feeds me as a speaker mm -hmm. and I think really helps the audience to connect too. So I don't want my eyes down reading from a page. I think that's right. Some people start with a joke <laughs> and um, kind of work through their points. Um, I found some kind of thank you f for inviting me here. Maybe pick up on a point that the, your introducer um, made in introducing you. You know, I, I know you all represent smaller newspapers at this conference. I came up through smaller newspapers, so I feel like, um, you know, I'm happy to, to offer anything, um, any lessons I've learned over the years, and maybe they'll be more, they'll be helpful to you at some point. Just kind of warm up a little bit, um, and then I dive right in. I've got three points. I start by telling them I have three points. It's, um, then I tell them what the points are, and then I kind of wrap it up and thank them again, and off I go. I'm a terrible joke teller. The, the humor kind of happens for me as I'm going. Um, so again, I, if I had to try to remember a joke, I would, I would ruin it. I just know I would. <clears throat> but I think keeping it engaging and light, um, and again, for me, that's through storytelling, um, seems to work. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. I think that's right, but I think um, and most people can tell a story. Um, and, and going back and recreating, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, retelling an event that happened to you um, is a pretty comfortable thing. No, and I mean, I've never really thought about it that way. Um, it's more, um, I think I pick up more tips from the kinds of events that I attend that have speakers, local folks. Like what? Um, oh, um, 
Maybe it is in the delivery or the structure, um, the lightness, again, just trying to really pay attention to what the audience is connecting with. Um, that can be humor, that can be kind of factual details, it can be emotion, um, but really sensing when I feel a connection with a speaker and watching the audience as well. I, I gave a commencement address but I was, couldn't believe they invited me to give a commencement address. I was very flattered um, at Bates um, a few years ago. And as someone who went to a community college um, and had a son uh, going through community college and looking out at all these wonderful success stories that I saw, um, in the audience. I can't even remember the, the stories I told or the point, but I just remember feeling very emotionally connected to these people. And I got fairly emotional in, in giving the speech. And it was, it was a very much a rah-rah, but kind of understanding, feeling like I understood where they were coming from and being able to applaud their success and congratulate their success. It was just, there, again, it was emotional and I think, um, if you let yourself go just a little bit, if you can get past the fear enough to really let go and, and be emotional and connect, you walk away feeling really good. Mm -hmm. I love it too. Well, you can't get me off the stage now with a hook. And I, one of the other things that's been really fun for me is apparently, um, and I didn't grow up in the newspaper business, <clears throat> there's kind of a mystique about what we do. And it, there's a glamor apparently to what we do. And if people really knew what regular Joes we were and how we struggle through these things every day. So I always feel like when I'm <clears throat> speaking about the paper, which is generally what I'm doing, I'm actually letting them in on a secret. You know, we're not as glamorous as you think we are. And it's, you know, we're, this is what it really looks like day in and day out. Oh, that could probably be the truth as well. But it's, um, it's kind of inviting people into our world that I enjoy doing and people seem to enjoy being taken on that little journey. So that part's fun. Oh boy, some of the things I've said already, I don't recommend writing a speech out word for word. Um, I, I, I think you should know your content, but not over practice it. Mm -hmm. I think I've done that as well. Um, breathe deeply. Put a smile on your face. It's okay. I was, I was also a speaker, especially early on, that would just race through a speech. And I think if you can really discipline yourself to speak slowly and take a deep breath and just pauses, it's okay to just take a pause and collect your thoughts. And that's calming for me um, as well when I'm speaking. And, um, and to treat it more like a conversation. It, it's always helpful for me. Hmm. I love that question. That's one of my favorites. No, I can't think of anything. I would just say, um, if you are nervous, you're not alone. You are not alone. Everybody understands that you're nervous. Um, every, I think there are very few people who are completely comfortable with public speaking from the beginning. Um, but I do think it can be a really joyful thing. And I never, oh good God, I had to take a speech class in high school. And that was harder than any big test I ever took. It was so hard for me. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that um, I persisted and, and was, in some cases, given the opportunity and some, in some ways forced into it because of my job, um, because I do enjoy it now. Well, this is not just about being able to get up and speak in front of a big group. This is about gaining some confidence um, in yourself and your ability to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, at a job interview um, with a customer, being comfortable communicating with people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or one to 500, is kind of the same skill. And learning to organize your thoughts and, and present them to someone um, happens on a lot of job sites. Um, happens between husbands and wives. Um, those are all wonderful um, communication skills to have, and you learn some of those through.
through a public speaking class um, and might not even realize it. 